All right. Rumors of my competence are somewhat exaggerated. But OK, so uh, yeah, I'm Pat Patterson. I'm in the uh, developer evangelist at uh, Salesforce. If you want to feed my personality cult, uh, I'm MetaDaddy on Twitter. And ask me in the bar later why that is. Um, and one of the great things that I get to do is uh, I organize the IoT area in the developer zone at our Dreamforce conference. And so this session is focusing on uh, one of our customers who has showed their product a couple of times and uh, the way that it's evolved over the past couple of years. And um, there's a, a little preview. Um, so are we going to work? All right, well, I'll just hit the button here. Or not. Thank you, Google. Oh, great. OK. Uh, OK, so that's me as a robot. OK, so um, there's been a few mentions of uh, technology disruption over the past day and a half. Uh, so lots of mentions of uh, Uber and other companies and uh, all of this disruption. But actually, over 100 years ago um, was the original disruption, which was manufacturing. So this ability to turn out um, large quantities of product uh, at a consistent level of quantity was literally revolutionary uh, in its time. And this is still how the picture that most people have in their head of uh, manufacturing. It's kind of dusty, smelly, dirty, noisy. But um, actually, manufacturing these days uh, looks somewhat more like this. Um, it's a high precision industry. It's uh, turning out the products that like, we're all using here um, at uh, like millions per month, I think. Um, Apple would not have been able to ship 48 million iPhones last quarter if they were made in an artisanal fashion by craftsmen uh, creating each one from uh, start to finish. And um, one of the requirements for manufacturing is a level of precision in uh, the dimensions of what you're creating. And our customer, uh, Hexagon Metrology, makes coordinate measuring machines. Okay, so you've got parts coming off your uh, production line, and they get measured, and the measurement's compared to the CAD models. And uh, the interesting thing about this is the tolerances are incredibly fine. So there is a dot here, I promise you. Um, I carefully measured it with a ruler on my screen so that uh, that's the, the, the approximate diameter of a human hair is about a tenth of a millimeter. So this dot here is like 10 times smaller, and this one's 10 times smaller again. That's a micron, a thousandth of a millimeter. And those are the tolerances that we're talking about. And those are the tolerances that these customer of, customers of our customer uh, require in uh, areas like aerospace, defense, um, uh, automotive. You really need these things to fit together uh, well. Now, the problem of working at that level of precision is that these uh, measuring machines are quite vulnerable, quite sensitive to heat, uh, humidity, uh, vibration, and a, no a number of other uh, environmental factors. So um, this is a problem because Manufacturing now is pretty much a 24-7, 365 business. You know, you don't stop the production line um, in, unless you absolutely have to. And you really don't want to stop the production line because the coordinate measuring machine uh, is telling you that the parts are out of spec when they aren't actually out of spec because somebody put a box down in front of the uh, AC vent and the room's warmed up a little bit. So the guys at, uh, the engineers at Hexagon had an idea. You know, it's the Internet of Things, uh, sensors. Uh, let's make a sensor pack 
to ship with our coordinate measuring machines so that we can actually be alerted to uh, all of these environmental uh, factors. And so this is, this is uh, the purpose of this session is to kind of uh, bring some lessons learned from their journey over the past uh, couple of years or so. And the first one is that they literally went to um, SparkFun and ordered uh, SparkFun developer kits to get started. Like super low cost, um, standard parts, so an Arduino based board, whole bunch of fun stuff, a breadboard and some LEDs and switches and sensors. And they got started writing some Python and prototype, prototype something uh, pretty rapidly <laughs> at you know, the throwaway cost, essentially. And they gradually evolved this. You know, they, they did some uh, first iterations. They started to uh, productize it. And um, this, so this is like early demo systems where they've kind of broken it out onto, uh, mounted it on a board here. And I think that's a beagle bone that you can kind of almost not see hidden in, uh, to the right of there. And so at, I don't trust this thing, uh, at Dreamforce in 2014, so that would be about 15 months ago. Um, so who was at ThinkMonk <coughs> last year or the year before? Okay, so my buddy, uh, Reed Kahlberg, who did the Kettle drone hookup, um, actually uh, knows uh, somebody at Hexagon, and he was putting together the IoT area two years ago, and he said, why don't you bring something? You know, you're, you're working on this thing, why don't you bring it? And uh, let's make it fun, let's make it interesting. Uh, let's not just have like a black box that you shake and it says, hey, you shook me, vibration. So let's see if this will play. Uh, let's see, volume off, okay. Oh, well. So the first lesson learned, do not hire me as your videographer because what I'll do is I'll take the video in portrait mode, upload it to YouTube, and it'll cut people's heads off. But this is uh, Joe Van Pelt, one of the uh, Hexagon engineers. So what we did was, um, as a bit of fun, we, um, oh, oh, it is streaming the audio. Oh, d disregard that. So what, what we did was just uh, put a number of programs on the arm. So this is a FANUC uh, robotic arm. And this had to be mounted in a, a Perspex case. Because this thing, as you'll see in a moment, this thing moves quickly. And we really didn't want somebody leaning in for a closer look and getting smacked with the robot arm, because then it would literally be a killer robot. Hence the title of the talk. So um, we programmed it to um, be able to be controlled from a mobile app. So this is using the same kind of Python uh, uh, layer in between to let it um, do a little dance. And you know, just a bit of showmanship, just a, something to bring people in for a closer look. And then, uh, there we, this is our Salesforce One mobile app. So now what it's going to do, it takes a second to upload the program because this is a bit more complex. But what it's going to do is it's going to go down and scan a part. Now this, on this robot arm is a Leica laser scanner. So see how quickly it goes. It just kind of goes back and forth and it's actually measuring to uh, a micron. Tolerance. This head, this laser scanning head, is a quarter of a million dollars. The robot arm is like peanuts, but that head is like really sophisticated technology. So, um, yeah, we, we, we had this thing. Let's see if we'll do the dance again. There we go. So we had this thing, and uh, we showed it, and if you smack the side of the case, it would uh, say, hey, vibration alert. And it was actually very, very effective. Um, we put it out front of our developer zone. And um, it just generated a lot of buzz and a lot of conversations. And a great example is I got talking to an attendee who uh, his company makes the pumps that pump oil off tankers in port. And when I said, oh yeah, it's got temperature vibration sensor, he said, vibration <coughs> sensor? Well, those motors, um, excessive vibration is an early indicator of failure. 
but people don't usually notice because the whole place is vibrating. And when these ships are in port, they're effectively connected. They have uh, networking. So we could put a sensor in uh, our motor and automatically raise a case, open a support case in Salesforce uh, before there's even a problem. And this, so this was amazing. This was attendees actually coming up with this predictive maintenance use case on the fly, just being prompted by a dancing robot, which is pretty awesome. So uh, let's get out of that. So, and, and also this had the effect of, um, you know, raising the profile of the project uh, generally, this kind of sensor pack uh, project. So a few months later, um, they're actually productizing this. Uh, it's called MMS Pulse, and MMS is Metrology Management System. And so this is the pack that uh, they are selling, I think, right about now. It should be uh, generally available. So there's like a, a hub here. And again, this is based, currently this is based on BeagleBone, though they're probably going to evolve away from that. And there's a light control, and the, there's, there's one of the sensors, and you can extend it and have uh, lots of different sensors. Um, and this retails for um, between either four or six thousand dollars, depending on which model you get. So if you know the cost of a BeagleBone Black, you'll know that there's a bit of margin there. And to be fair to <laughs> to be there, fair to Hexagon, they've put a lot of effort and thought uh, into this. You know, the BeagleBone is only one component because. What, what this is doing is, this is driving uh, a dashboard. So there's like a host PC on the measuring machine um, that gives you this really nice <coughs> dashboard. So everything is OK right now. Um, and you can see you know, uh, when the program started, where the uh, machine is, and so on. And it scales up. So when you've got a factory, you can be monitoring your entire uh, deployment of uh, machines and you know you can get real uh, dollar data as to as to what's going on and like this looks like there's three of them down there so that's going to need some attention so um, this is very cool stuff and so what they did next was that so they're at the, 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 the stage of having a working uh, prototype they can make calls into Salesforce to open a support case uh, through our APIs, and so they want to go big. And so one route they could have taken was to start deploying servers to gather this customer data and uh, bring it back into uh, the company. And what they decided to do was just write an intermediate layer on uh, Amazon, and then they worked with us as a pilot customer for our IoT cloud, which is designed to aggregate huge amounts of sensor data and extract the meaningful information. So the erroneous conditions, uh, the trends, and allow analysis, and so on. End of the pitch. So um, by this September, uh, we uh, asked them back, you know, can you come and um, bring your, your current system and show, show your progress. And so they actually had a shrink wrap product. And this is a, a more portable, smaller measuring machine. They actually, just behind their uh, sign there is a granite slab for stability that's about this big by this big by about this thick. So, and the rest of it's steel because it's supporting a granite slab. So this weighs, I think it was uh, 500 or 700 pounds. I mean, this is a s substantial uh, piece of kit. But it's actually, uh, it was quite nice, actually. You could just walk up and, um, with permission, of course, kick the side of the machine, and the little vibration thing would just immediately snap red, and you could go and see that a support case had been filed. So very, very um, fun. And so. Um, yeah, so the lesson, you know, another lesson from this is um, you know, they leveraged existing platforms. They stuck to their knitting of uh, sensing the error conditions and then used off-the-shelf components to build out the rest. Um, now, one of their customers is Zimmer Biomet. So I don't know about you, but when I hear the word Zimmer, I think of a Zimmer frame. 
but they're actually, I think they're the world's biggest producer of artificial hips and knees. So they have very, very fine tolerances. So now they have uh, this MMS pulse system, this um, metrology uh, management system deployed at Zimmer with uh, just on a couple of machines now in pilot, but they'll be going to 100 uh, kits shipped to Zimmer. So you can do the math, four to $6,000 times 100. This is already um, a valuable product line that they've built up in about 18 months. So pretty amazing stuff. So shipping, like, they're pushing the data up through I IoT Cloud. And what they're actually doing is they're breaking it out to a number of systems. So not just Salesforce, ServiceMax, um, Cloud Craze, and a whole bunch of others. Once they've, once they've got that data uh, flowing, they can uh, push it out anywhere. <coughs> so lessons learned. Uh, one is, come on, Google. Okay, use PowerPoint rather than Google Slides. No, start with off the shelf components, okay? You can get started so cheap these days. We're looking at living in a golden age for uh, software and hardware development. And to a large extent, this stuff plugs together and works. Um, bring the show. You know, make a demo that, that, that works and uh, engages people. Don't be afraid to add a little bit of pizzazz, even if it's not core to the uh, the actual functionality, just to engage people. You know, don't go all, uh, all over to the show. You know, you still have to have some meat there, but um, definitely you can have fun. And leverage platforms. Don't try and build everything yourself. Don't, does anybody deploy physical servers apart from? Shit, I was at HP Discover this week, and I'm telling you there are a bunch of people out there with boxes, they love oh and my God. To and pet <laughs> and lick, and they, they, they love those boxes. Special snowflake I pets like, oh, rather than cattle. Was like, I love this thing. The All right. Software, nobody was in there. The, the, the hardware storage talk, standing room only. All right. So I've got three minutes left. So I'm going to do a demo because there might be time. So um, I didn't, I didn't want to bring this $5,000 black box because it's really boring. I mean, it's absolutely essential if you're manufacturing, but a bit dull. So these are awesome. These are uh, bt.tn button. Um, and they are 69 euros. They're pretty pricey, 69 euros standard, and a bit more to have them custom printed. Um, so, but it's the simplest user interface possible. Okay, you press the button. This is uh, uh, got a SIM in it. Um, nice tactile, satisfying click. This one's on Wi-Fi. So I violated two uh, pieces of advice. So I'm relying on Wi-Fi and I hand shipped my demo from the US. So past customs. Um, anyway, so, so what I could do with this. Button versus dash, huh? Nice. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if I, if by default, these are set up to email. So you click it, uh, lights flash. And while I'll leave it to flash because it takes, <laughs> takes a moment. Um, so it's just going up to its btt.tn system. And you can configure what you want to happen here. I'm doing email. And then this should go green. So I have my moment of stress as we watch the yellow light going around. But it did go green just before the session. So, you know, I would expect it to, to happen again. Come on, go green, go green. Oh my god. How long? Ah, oh, yay! So I should be able to go and I don't know. Trying not to display my entire inbox here. Oh, there we go. Button pressed. Ah, uh, there. No. So okay. So I can send an email. So pretty boring. Um, I want to because I'm a Salesforce developer evangelist. And I've got 40 seconds left. Wow. Okay, I might go over by a minute. But you started talking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. My mental clock was on pause while James was talking. I, I work for Salesforce. I wanted to do something in Salesforce. Now I could use Ift, um, but I'm going to go just really, really basic. Um, so I can go change the action on these. And this is a great tool for for 
for doing demos, playing around. If you're kind of back end focused, it's a great way to activate something. So I'm going to say, I'm going to have a new action, and I want to ex execute when the button's pressed. And I want to do HTTP. And luckily, in Salesforce, if I can find the right window, there's a way to open a case from uh, just a standard HTML form. Okay, so you can put this form on your website and have your customers saying, hey, I've got a problem. And we have this nice form interface. So I can just copy a few parameters here. So I just need a URL. So this is like doing the simplest, dumbest demo, is I just want to post a bunch of parameters. So here's where I have to like get, do swift copy pasting. And so much scope for error here. I feel like I'm on a tightrope without uh, a safety net, but let's, let's go for it. So uh, your URL, there's about, there's about uh, half a dozen parameters. So you know, this just means that I don't have to, ooh. This just means that I don't have to um, start getting a token, writing code, logging in, uh, calling APIs, because I can just do a dumb form post. So here we go. So we're going to go have name. Now, this is where I get to have fun, because the button actually has identity. So I can say the button's name. And then I can say uh, the email. And we can have the button's email address, which is kind of odd, but we'll just run with it. And we can say, what else do we have to fill out here? Uh, the button's phone number. I don't think that's uh, required. The subject of the case. OK, so we're going to say subject is uh, what is it? Uh, ID. Pressed. I'm paranoid about things like exclamation marks in fields. You never know. And we're going to say description uh, is Pat press the button on date. Sate date at time. And then we've got this external one. I guess this is because it's coming from outside the parameter, outside the, the platform. OK, so ch -ch -ch -ch, don't think that need anything else. So next, next, save. All right, let's make some magic. So hopefully, if I press it now, it might even be a little bit faster because it might actually have remembered to be connected to the Wi-Fi network. But we'll all do the heart-stopping wait as the, as the lights flash around. Come on. Come on. But it's not a failed demo at thing, Mark. No, no, no. It's not going to fail. I'm going to hold it to the camera. Is it going to go? Go on. Post that form. Post that form. Post that form. Did I change it from get to post, by the way? <laughs> OK, it went green. Let's see if it worked. I don't know if I did press. OK, all open cases. Oh, actually, my pocket buzzed. So I'm fairly confident if I go to people. <laughs> <laughs> and I go to all open cases. Yay! It actually worked. OK. Pat pressed the button. At 4:19 p.m. There you go. So yeah, the, 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 so so like the intention here was to illustrate like off-the-shelf components, really really nice piece of kit, um, bringing a bit of showmanship, and uh, leveraging a platform, doing things as simply as you can, and it all kind of works. All right, so um, zero seconds, right on time. Thank you. Yes, <laughs>